Uh, let's do a little demonstration. Council tool, velvet cut, four pound American felling axe in action. I'm going to take out these two overcrowded trees. Ah, foot stuff right there. So coming in here, I'm going to give them a few whacks, make sure nothing's going to fall down on me. Maybe some small trees, but I still want to make sure the tops aren't going to snap off or branches that are stuck up in the wind uh, fall down on me as I'm uh, doing work on this thing. Small branch in the way. I want to get this guy out of the way. I figured I'll use the axe to go ahead and snip it off. It's pretty sharp, but unfortunately, these uh, small branch proves a little too resilient for my liking, and I just snap it, bend it out of the way. All right, so I get to work on this front tree right here, but yeah, of course, there's more stuff just uh, you know poking at me in my neck. I can't get a good swing with these dead branches in the way, and this is good forestry right here too. Because it's called a fire ladder, so a grass fire will come in. And the grass fire will turn into a forest fire by catching up on these dead branches and burning all the way up the tree. So I'm doing this tree a huge favor by doing this right here. It's, uh, you know, part of a well-managed forest, which yeah, this area doesn't look like it's too well-managed. So, yeah. Make sure I get enough of these things out of the way so I can give it a good full swing. Now, the key when you're doing this is you want to hit as low of the ground as possible, which is pretty awkward. Most people are chopping trees down from uh, shoulder length, shoulder height. Uh, it's a little more awkward. It's not something I practice all the time. I don't really fell a ton of trees, and you don't want to really devastate the environment. So I'll give it a go. But yeah, that's the advantage of a 36-inch head, 4-pound head, excuse me, 36-inch half, 4-pound head, is you just give it a good slow swing and let the uh, bit just sink into the wood. Uh, I think I missed a few times. I put a little nick in my edge. <laughs> I, mean, I totally need to level up my skill for sure. But... Smaller trees like this, you don't have to do a back cut. You can just uh, keep hitting it from the front until it goes, which I do. And there it goes, right there. Kind of a tall tree, but it's pretty small. Uh, am I going to limit? Mm, now, nah, just move it out of the way. We'll go for the second one behind it. Again, these are kind of some overcrowded trees. This area is not missing them. Just kind of help uh, this area breathe a little more. So, come in here, hit it again, make sure nothing's going to fall down on me. That's always the worst. And here we go. Again, as low to the ground as possible. I believe it was uh, five cents for every inch that was left up off the ground. <laughs> if I was really good, I'd definitely be getting these uh, stumps a little bit lower too. But it's kind of the limits of my skill right now. Oh, miss again. Another cool thing about a 36 inch shaft is that it's the safest. It's the safest axe to use because if you miss, it's just going to go straight to the ground and not into your feet, not into your knee or shin. So, yeah, if you're learning, 36 inches is definitely the way to go. But this is what this axe was designed to do. It was designed to do stuff like you see right here. Fell trees. <laughs> That's why it has that long haft. That's why it has that really thin bit, uh, the four pound head. It's designed for this. It's not designed for splitting wood or anything like that. So this is really where the velvet cut shines. It's not a log bucker either. So we're going to have to do a back cut on this one, I feel. And so I'm going to have to get this branch out of the way. It seems to be a little bit more resilient in my liking. Also got more stuff poking me in my freaking neck, so we're gonna have to come over here, take out more of these dead pine branches. Again, these are just super dead. I'm just hitting them and they're snapping off. It's not that I'm really cutting them. Uh, give them another uh, swing, snap it off. There we go. Yeah, you always want to clear your work area so it's safe for you to uh, swing your axe here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give this guy a chop with my uh, Bark River Bravo 1. I figured my knife was sharp enough to just to cut it in one cut. So I come in here for it, and this branch proves to be even more resilient than that. I'm, you know, full force, not working. So then I'm like, okay, I'll just whittle it down. And then I just get really impatient. I'm just like, you know what? I'll just uh, freaking hit this thing until it freaking just snaps, and there it goes. Cool. So I'm a little, a little disappointed that I couldn't just get it in one cut, but whatever. Let's get back to uh, felling this uh, small tree. Uh, pick my axe back up. It's kind of awkward because I'm going left-handed here, too. There's just not enough room to do a right-handed overhand swing on the left side. So I'll change my technique to get some left-handed strikes. Uh, just letting the weight of the axe do the work. You should only have to do a few cuts here. don't want to cut all the way through. That way you leave a hinge for the uh, tree to fall on. And there it goes. Boom. Cool. Got him. <laughs> all right, let's walk over here. And let's do some limbing. This axe is freaking sharp. This is probably where it's also going to shine, too. So, put a few wax here. There we go. Cut that off. Uh, change techniques. Do an overhand so I can get the opposite side here. Cause it's kind of unwieldy, but uh, this is where the sharpness of this tool really shines. I mean, it's like a freaking sword. Look at that. Cha! <laughs> 
Coming over here out to the end. And here comes my favorite part. I just... Cha! <laughs> man, what an awesome tool. It's so sharp, man. There we go. Yeah, get this thing all limbed up. I think I'll use this for some uh, bushcraft practice. I'll uh, cut this thing up and use it for various little bushcraft items. Uh, even target stands, too. Those are pretty, yeah, pretty good. 